do you guys remember the world of Godzilla? I know I do. But in case you don't, after King Kong vs. Godzilla in 2020, Toho was coming back with its own Godzilla series in which there will be spin-off movies dedicated to individual characters and said characters will cross over with the Godzilla movies. It's like the MCU but with Godzilla. The whole concept itself is very ambitious. Toho haven't attempted a cinematic universe like this since the 1960s, and naturally, a lot of fan excitement has been generated around it, including from yours truly. There are so many ideas for movies within this universe that could be fun and interesting to explore. And today, I'm going to be using a format by YouTubers Kento Bento and the Alpha J Show, and I'm going to be going over 7 ideas I have for the world of Godzilla, including the most likely, most creative, most stupid, and the most unexpected. So, without further ado, let us begin. I don't think it would be a surprise to anyone if Mothra were to get her own spin-off. Mothra clearly has the star power to hold her own in a cinematic universe just like how she did in the 90s and her solo movie back in the 60s. At the time of this video, we don't know what tone the world of Godzilla is aiming for. If we're going off the last 5 years of Godzilla films, my guess would probably be that it's gonna be serious. However, Mothra could be a standout, potentially being a much more light-hearted character or maybe even making herself a more mystical being. A being that's separated from the rest of the cast in a more godly manner. Similar to how the anime trilogy did, you can fix a lot of the problems that Mothra's character had in the past, like the whole Batra situation, so that there's more of a morally grey conflict than what actually happened. I did an entire video about that if you don't know. You can make Mothra vs Boggin and officially bring Boggin into the Godzilla movies. You can have a mystical side quest with Mothra and have her go off on her own journey where she fights some of her original foes like Deskidora and Dagada. I think if anyone has the most potential, it would without a doubt be Mothra, and I'd personally be perfectly okay with a spin-off featuring this character. I've stated before that a Shin Godzilla sequel would be a bad idea, but other than Mothra, it's the most likely Godzilla movie for the world of Godzilla. And ignoring the whole, is Shin technically a part of the whole world of Godzilla debacle? A Shin Godzilla sequel can be a fairly entertaining movie if its cards were played right. Just to throw out a story right here right now, the fifth form humanoids on Godzilla's tail will wake up and begin causing havoc, each of them being different in both design and abilities. You can really go all out and create some very interesting and unique designs and abilities for each monster. For example, one can be an adept flyer making him very difficult to catch, and he can turn himself into a ball of atomic energy as a defense mechanism. Another can be a basic Godzilla clone, but maybe with more slightly human features? There are plenty of crazy and neat concepts for the fifth form of Shin Godzilla. Why not use one of those? And let's not leave the fourth form out of this too. That messed up tail could become some sort of atomic club which Godzilla could smack and cut through buildings or planes with. He could also project some sort of shield out in front of him, kind of like an AT field from Evangelion. I feel like for a lot of the stuff I said about taking Shin too far in a possible sequel, these would be abilities I think could still keep in spirit of the character and not take things too far. And overall, I think a Shin Godzilla sequel would just be, well, heck of a lot of fun. Leading the most creative pack, we have my boy, Gigan. I've been asked a couple times on this channel if I want a solo Gigan movie, and my answer would be an absolute yes. Out of any Godzilla monsters, with one or two exceptions, Gigan has without a doubt the most potential with a solo movie. Gigan, I think, is one of the most fascinating of all the monsters in the entire series. His simplistic yet very creative design is wonderful to look at, his personality is fun and silly, and he has one of the coolest sets of weapons of any monster in the series. But the one thing people never really talk about with Gigan is his origins. Where did he come from? A guy in solo movie can answer that question. What if he was made by some crazy mad alien scientist who wanted to conquer other worlds? Or alternatively, Gigan could be a mortally wounded creature that a hospitable alien race took in and gave him cybernetic enhancements. Giving Gigan a personality would be essential in this kind of story. He would be the one that the themes are playing off of. Would he like his new cyborg self, or would he be against it? This is the kind of stuff that a movie like this could tackle. It could also give us some pretty awesome fight scenes utilizing some of the cybernetic parts. Maybe he could use grappling hooks to grab onto buildings and throw himself at enemy monsters. Or maybe a Swiss Army Knife-esque arm weapon would be more favorable. There are so many awesome awesome and creative things he can do with the Gigan Solo movie, and I hope that if any of Godzilla's monster crew gets a spin-off, I seriously hope that it would be Gigan.
Okay, this one might need some explanation. This film wouldn't be the first time that Godzilla and Evangelion would cross over. There was the Godzilla vs. Evangelion ad campaign that served as promotion for Shin Godzilla by using the popularity of both Eva and Hideaki Anno to build up hype for Shin. And I actually think Shin Godzilla would be where and how this film could actually work. Much like my proposal for Shin 2.0, the fifth form could also be a method to how the Avas could be brought in. Like for example, you have the fifth form, and the Avas are built around those. That's it. This would also fit in line with Neon Genesis Evangelion because the Avas are actually humanoids with cybernetic enhancements. Who's to say you can't do the same things to Godzillas? Or you can make them like really badass mecha Godzillas, shoot you sort of things. You can call it something like Ava Unit G. I wrote that out in the script and I even acknowledged that I was gonna be stupid, but like, <laughs> just reading it out loud, it's like, it's so stupid. <laughs> I also think tonally a Godzilla vs. Evangelion film would work fairly well. While Evangelion is certainly infamous for its moments of, uh... Clicking <laughs> depression. It does have its lighthearted moments as well. If you must think, do it in German! Uh, well, I'll try. Uh, strudel? Bratwurst? Don't go! And Shin Godzilla is basically the same thing tonally. Heck, the entire movie is, is basically a recreation of episode 6 of Evangelion. You know, the one where my old Discord profile picture died. Thanks, Ryan. I stole your joke. I think that a Godzilla vs. Evangelion movie is just a great idea on its own, and I don't understand why it's not a movie already. You know what? Screw it. Just make that thing now. But just, just don't delay Ava 3.0 plus 1.0. Otherwise... The fact that Jet Jaguar has been brought back in the movie yet is a cardinal sin that shall not be ignored. Jet Jaguar, for those of you who don't know, was a robot created in a 1973 Godzilla movie, Godzilla vs. Megalon, and I love him. He's just such a bro and just seems so down with everything, and... He's a Chad. So you guys remember when I was talking about Mothra and I referenced how bringing her back could make some more lighthearted movies? Well Toho, here's the poster child for bringing back lighthearted Godzilla movies. Jet Jaguar is one of the goofiest characters in the entire series. A brightly colored robot who can change sizes and who was designed by an elementary school student. That last part wasn't a joke by the way. And I don't care what medium you bring him back in, I just want Jet Jaguar to come back. I don't remember what video I referenced this in, but I stated that I really want a Jet Jaguar sitcom, and I still really want that to happen because I think it could actually lead to some pretty epic comedy. <laughs> Jet Feld is filmed in front of a live studio audience. Aside from that, the giant tokusatsu hero series is still very popular today. The absolute explosion of shows like SSSS Gridman and the still booming popularity of Ultraman, who knows, a Jet Jaguar solo movie or series could actually work really well in our modern time. Yeah, I'm not really going to be making a whole lot of friends for the most stupid option, am I? Well, this statement can be applied to all the Godzilla clones, so Biollante, Space Godzilla, Orga, and Mechagurus. I think out of all of them, Mechagodzilla is the most likely to be made into his own solo movie, so I'm using him as the example. The problem with making a Mechagodzilla solo movie, or any Godzilla clone solo movie, is that you always have Godzilla in the film in some way. In Mechagodzilla's case, it would be in the name. The character in question is called Mecha Godzilla, and I think you see the point. The whole point of a Godzilla spin-off movie is that it's a movie separate from the Godzilla series that would still take place in the Godzilla universe. You can't really do that if Godzilla's presence is always there in some way, shape, or form. And what does Mecha Godzilla but a Godzilla robot look like? I'll tell you, a city. This right here wouldn't be the only reason why I think Godzilla clone spin-offs don't work. I also just think that they wouldn't be very interesting movies, with the exception of Biollante because her concept is just so weird and out there that you can make a Biollante solo movie and make it freaking awesome. But yeah, in a world of spin-off Godzilla movies, you can't really have solo movies dedicated to characters who are biologically, or in this case, mechanically, linked with Godzilla. And on the topic of Godzilla, that brings us to our most unexpected. Why not reuse older Godzilla movie concepts that were scrapped? I'm gonna go into this later, but I think that the entire world of Scrap Godzilla movies is just so interesting. There are so many bloody movies that you can make! My personal favorite being... Untitled 20th Anniversary Godzilla Film. Nah, just pulling your chain, it's Godzilla vs. M. 
There are so many scrap monsters that just got canned, especially for the 90s movies. There, we didn't get Gigamoth, Mechamothra, Berserk Astro Godzilla, Ghost Godzilla, Emperor Ghidorah, and Baruboroi. This is just such a cool monster cast. You can probably just fill an entire series with these dudes, and I wouldn't mind whatsoever. The reason why I think that this would be the most unexpected is because we don't know any of these dudes, and Toa has already thrown them out into the trash, even though a lot of these guys are actually a lot cooler than the monsters we got in the Final Product 90s movies. I'm not saying that these dudes are better, but I'm totally saying that these dudes are better. Honestly, it'd be a shock to everyone if Toho said that for the world of Godzilla they bring back Mechamothra or Baruparoi or someone like that. And personally, I'd be all for that. Scrap monsters are just the freaking coolest. And I hope that they'll be brought back for the world of Godzilla. So that's basically everything. These are all the movies I think would fit into each different category. But I want to know, what do you guys think would fit into these sorts of sections? Tell me in the comments section down below and I'll tell you how wrong you are. <laughs> that, that's a joke, guys. <laughs> but anyways, I am Sam the Gigant fan, telling you that all scrap Godzilla monsters are freaking awesome, and reminding you all to wash your hands.